And the kind of missions we flew, 95% of them were hot missions. Somebody on the ground was in pretty big trouble. Well, they wouldn't have called us to start with. So when we get there, all the bad guys on the ground, they don't want to see us coming. They don't like us. They know who we are, and they're trying to kill us, and we're trying to kill them before they can kill us. My job in Vietnam was air rescue to try to recover pilots that had been uh, crashed or shot down. And on one particular mission, uh, when we got to the scene, there was three survivors, and there was only room for the medic, and so they left me and another guy on the ground. We're starting to get surrounded by this uh, local VC village, and all of a sudden over the treetop came these two Army gunships, and they just flew right at them, and, and they covered us um, until my outfit could come back in and pick us up. On the way back, I asked the pilot who, who that other crew was, and he said well, that, that he had called the Razorbacks to come in and cover us. So that, that was how I, I got to know the Razorbacks. When we got new, brand new aircraft, we needed new call signs from what we had before. Since no other uh, armed helicopter platoon had that uh, name, and it was a great looking patch, uh, we picked the Razorbacks to be our call sign. One of the individuals I've shot down with, uh, Bill Stribling, uh, he had been a, uh, a grunt before he got into the Razorbacks. Having lived a, a tour uh, hot and nasty and wearing the same clothes for weeks at the time, when I'd see these door gunners come in to pick us up, I noticed they wore clean fatigues and were shaving and all that, and that looked pretty good. So I thought I wanted to try that, so when my tour was up, I extended for this particular helicopter company. And one of his comments um, that's in the documentary was, when you're on the ground, you might get in skirmishes now and then every month or so or whatever, but in the Razorbacks, it was virtually on a daily basis. The adrenaline high, I guess you would call it, of actually shooting at someone who's shooting at you. It's exhilarating, but very addictive, where you think, you know, man, you know, next time we get, you know, I can't, you, you go out on a mission and nothing happens, you're let down. You come back and you're almost depressed. We wanted to be in combat. I mean, a lot of guys said we were crazy, and I didn't think we were crazy. That was the mission. I mean, and we loved doing it. When I was in Vietnam, I, um, I I became very interested in photography and I started shooting a lot of black and white photography. So I thought I'd make a little short piece using those photographs and I asked if they would mind if I did some interviews. Once I got into the documentary, I, I couldn't, I, I, I really couldn't deal with my own issues. So I just, I just put all that stuff to the side, uh, otherwise I probably wouldn't have made the documentary. And so I, I just, I just refused to kind of go into the, that realm and just focus on, on the project that I had. It got to be that that was a unit you extended for or you did a second tour with. A little saying up on, on the wall, we'd tap it as we'd go out the door. It said, Razorbacks go where angels fear to tread. And I got to the point where I was believing that. After the war, they kind of kept, a few of them kept in touch, and then they started having reunions, and it, it kind of grew from that. And uh, in the documentary that I did, I interviewed 22 members from that whole course of eight years that the platoon existed. And it, it was a brotherhood. I was always surrounded with good people when I was over there. Never had to worry about them. Never had to watch my back. I always had somebody to watch it. I'd watch theirs, they'd watch back. There was a lot of things that affected my life in a positive way. And, and one of them was the people that was in the Razorbacks that I got to work with. I, I guess positive is one word, but uh, profound might be a, a more better uh, word for it because it's, it, war is such a profound experience. I can't really necessarily say that the Vietnam experience was, a lot of the guys came back with positive things from it because a lot of them, most of them had issues to deal with uh, PTSD and that type of thing, but the reunions helped quite a few of them. 
I really did want to make the documentary to, to honor this particular platoon and, and for the, the work they did. So, so often in combat and, and other aspects of our life, people who do extraordinary things go unnoticed. And in a way, the, the story that they experienced over there is a story that they're experiencing today. It's, it's a universal theme. We weren't heroes. Just we had a job to do, and we did our job, and we helped save some people along the way. So, so be it. That's a byproduct. I think overall, uh, the Razorbacks embraced the documentary very well. I haven't really heard any bad things from it because it basically, I try to tell it, as I said, in their own voice. So, um, I really didn't editorialize on on the documentary at all. I, I wound up doing what I wanted to do, and, and that was to tell their story, and uh, hopefully I, I, I did it in, a, in an honorable and a good manner.